Now, many of you will remember the video I did recently explaining how a free hub works and its actual purpose on a bike. And I asked you to get involved in the comments of what you would like to see next and how it works. One of the most popular had to be a headset. So today, that's what we're going to be looking at. Now, what exactly is a headset? Well, I guess you could call it a rotatable junction that sits within the head tube of a bike. Sounds quite complicated, but in essence, it allows you to steer and control the bike. Now, generally on a road bike, we use two different types of headsets. So the integrated A headset and also the traditional threaded version. Now, headsets, much like bottom brackets, can be a bit of a minefield out there because there's probably 10 different standards, believe it or not, and within them, loads of different variants. But generally on road bikes, we only use two different types. So today, that's exactly what we're gonna look at. We're gonna skip over all the rest because that could just add further confusion into the mix. So first up, the traditional headset. Now these are what bikes use traditionally for years and years and years. And if you think that if you've ever had to replace the bearings on a threadless headset and you've been in a bit of a minefield trying to find the right ones, these were no simpler. Because believe it or not, there were up to 13 different versions and standards, let alone not talking about the actual ball bearing size themselves. One inch JIS, one inch Rally, one inch Standard, one inch Professional Campagnolo, one inch Italian, French, East German, Austrian, BMX, French Tandem, inch and eighth, Molten, and inch and a quarter. Now some of these headsets, they differentiated themselves from another one by as little as the actual angle that the thread was cut into a steerer tube as well as the component, not to mention the actual diameter of the steerer tube there too. And then you've got the pitch of it. So if you're ever looking to restore an old retro or vintage bike, you need to make sure you get the correct part. And that's not that easy these days. Right, with all this trivia out of the way, let's actually see then how it works. Now it consists of the following parts, which can be loosely split into two categories, the lower assembly and the upper assembly. So the lower assembly, first up, we've got a fork crown race. Then normally you have a dust seal, but that's not always the case, but mostly it is. Then you've got some ball bearings. Now these ones are fitted within a retainer themselves, but again, that's not always the case. This is more likely with a more modern headset. And then we've got the lower pressed cup. Then moving on to the upper assembly, we've got the upper pressed cup, see, pretty logical. Then we've got another dust seal, bearings, the upper threaded race. Then we've got a few washers, again, not always necessary, but generally you do tend to have them. And then the threaded lock nuts. Right, let's actually assemble the headset then. And why not do it on an actual bike? Believe it or not, these forks are from an old team bike of mine from well, at least 20 years ago, probably 25, or maybe a little bit less, I don't know. Either way, first up, we're gonna start with the fork crane race then. Now this is interference fitted onto these bikes. So steel is a wonderful material because it's well, quite resistant to quite a lot of abuse, let's face it. So that would slide on, and importantly, you've got the angled pieces, the uppermost part, because that's where the bearing is actually gonna sit. But how are we gonna get it on? Well, I've already said it's interference fit, but as strong as I am, as you can see, I can't quite get it all the way on. So I am gonna need just to actually hit that into place with a special tool, the Crown Race Installation Tool. Right, so now we've got that crane race installed, it's time to actually fit the pressed cups into the head tube. So we've got the lower one here and the upper one here. The upper one can look slightly different, it all does depend on the different models out there. And as I've already mentioned quite a few times, there are so many different types. So it's time to bring up this old relic, an old race bike of mine. Seen many a victory, this one, on the boards. Now, what I'm gonna do is use the headset insulation tool to insert this cup into the lower part, and then this one into the top. And that's gonna give the bearings inside of that retainer there a surface to sit on so that we can steer the bike nicely.
Right, now that our fixed cups or headset cups are pressed into place, as well as the fork crane, we're gonna start assembling it more and more. So first up, let's put that little dust cover on. So again, you might not always have that, but generally you do, because you wanna keep as much grime out of there as possible. At this point, normally put a little bit of grease around the actual race there, the bearing race, the smooth surface that the ball bearings sit on and mate onto. It doesn't need a lot, just enough to help them try and operate smoothly. Then we're going to slide that bearing down over and onto the actual fork crane race. Now there is an upside and a downside to put this on. You want to make sure that it is gone on correctly. So if you've got them inside of a retaining ring like that, you're gonna have the most visible side of the ball bearings at the lower part onto the fork crane. And then it's probably worthwhile just putting a dab more grease actually onto these bearings before inserting it into the actual head tube cup here. And then you can see there a nice shiny surface and that's gonna be where these ball bearings actually rotate on. So just inside of here, allowing these forks to actually steer. Right, so as you can see, we've got that lower assembly all in there, but well, the jigsaw is nowhere near complete. You couldn't go out riding on that, could you? So next up, again, a little dust cover. It does depend on the model, the version, the age and everything like that. And then you're gonna put that bearing on again. So you can see I've already greased up the actual uh, upper pressed cup there. That's gonna allow those bearings just to rotate just a little bit better. And then it's time for that locking nut here, part of the, well, rather the upper bearing race before we actually put the locking nut on. So it's got a thread on there. Sometimes you need a little bit of persuasion. It all depends on how clean the thread is on the fork. This one actually, believe it or not, isn't that clean. I should uh, recut that at some point. But you may need to give it just a little bit of persuasion with a spanner. Of course, if you start to apply too much pressure, stop immediately because it's likely you're actually gonna be crossing that thread. So when it is actually tightened up, then it's time to apply the washers and then that locking nut. But we're not done yet, are we? Oh no. Now once all the assembly is put in place like so, this is where the actual fine tuning adjustments are made and which gave many a mechanic over the years a headache because too tight and well, the bearings are essentially gonna be getting pulled in too much towards one another and wearing out all the components, which is costly and not that safe really because your steering is going to be compromised. Too loose and likewise, it's all gonna wear out too quickly because you're gonna be getting big old impacts from any bumps you feel. So you can almost do it up by finger and then start to feel the adjustment there. Now I think I can probably have that a little bit looser. So I just ease it off a fraction. You wanna do it. Now I can feel just a little bit of knocking. Tighten up a little bit more. Yeah, that's spot on. Now this is the bit which is always troublesome for people because you're trying to tighten two nuts against one another or certainly hold one and then use that lock nut to actually lock it all down into place. So these headset spanners specific for the job, they do come again in loads of different versions, 30, 32, 34, 36, 40 millimeters and everything. But yeah, then you want to just lock that lock nut into place. And then hopefully you've got nice smooth steering. If you're fussy like I am, you tend to just back off the bottom one a little bit until it's all working A-OK. -okay. But hopefully that's given you a quick overview on how the threaded headset works. What was that? The handlebars? Oh yeah, this is where we use a quill stem. Here we are, pair of my old racing bars. Obviously had a bit of a tumble that day. Um, as you can see, we've got a wedge system here and a bolt. So now the bolt threads into this wedge. And as you tighten that bolt, the wedge gradually creeps upwards on the lower portion of the actual quill here of the stem, and then goes on in and basically wedges inside of the actual steerer tube of the forks. And that is kind of interference fit again. It was around for donkey's years and well, it was still on plenty of bikes today. 
The downside with them is quite often they can easily become stuck inside of a fork steerer and well it can be an absolute pain in the backside to actually release them unless you use lots of grease in the first place. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So we'll fit that into there and you'll see just exactly how it works. Well that mess, Ugh. it's alright we'll clean that up in a minute. And that is how the threaded headset works. Right, let's move on then to the A headset or the threadless style. Now, just rewind though just a few moments and think about all those various components which comprise the threaded headset. It was, well, pretty cumbersome, wasn't it actually? In loads of different bits and you had to get your head around exactly how they went. Whereas with the threadless style, this is literally the headset in my hand here. And you don't even need those big old headset spanners too. Instead, you could easily adjust a near enough fit one, in fact, with a tiny little multi-tool like this, or just a single Allen key. Now the only downside, which is gonna be just like with the threaded style, is with the fork steerer. So down there on the fork crown at the bottom, you're gonna have, generally, a crown race just down there, like you can see. This is Chris Opie's bike. I hope he doesn't mind, I've borrowed it. But not always, because this can be an absolute minefield, like I said, right at the start. In this case, we have got a crane race, which is essentially interference fit and hit into place. Sometimes, though, these can actually be split and just simply pushed into place. And in other instances, you don't even have one. So it's best to check, actually, with the manufacturer or headset to find out if you're a little bit unsure. But today, we're actually just going to go through on how they actually work. So I've removed all of the gubbins, the internals, the bearings, Let's go about putting them back in and telling you exactly how this system works compared to the other one. Now firstly, the biggest difference between the two setups we're looking at today is the fact that the threadless or A headset style use cartridge bearings. So look at that, sealed bearings, no mess, nothing like that like the other ones which are quite fragile to be perfectly honest. Instead these ones, well you can see on the top of it there, it's been machined in such a way that that is gonna sit perfectly inside of this head tube, which has also been machined in such a way. Although, it's not always the case. Now, some threadless or A headset style headsets, they're the same things, basically. Some of them have press fit in cups, just like the previous headset that we've been looking at. Also, like the cheap bike to super bike bike that I renovated and made to look a million dollars, that used exactly that system. It was threadless, but had press fit cups. So. The idea behind this bearing is that it will simply slot on top of that fork crane race and then when you put the forks into the head tube, that will match up perfectly with this head tube. Now when it comes to assembling the lower headset, it's probably quite worthwhile if it's the first installation just to put some grease around the bearing or around the crane race. That's just going to stop any water or moisture from ingressing or at least try and prevent it for a little bit longer. In most cases, it is the lower headset bearing that tends to fail first. Now, you could put it straight into the head tube or alternatively down onto the crane race. I'm going to put it down there on the crane race, why not? And then simply slide into place before we put the upper assembly in place. Now time to put in the upper sealed bearing. So it's a different size and the reason being is that the lower bearing tends to take more impact and that's why they have a bigger one there to try and spread the load slightly. So the compression ring then, it simply slides over the steerer tube of the fork and then sits down inside of the actual inner race of that upper bearing. Now the reason it does that is because when you start to actually tension up the headset, that applies pressure and stops the bearing from moving and importantly, keeps the steerer tube nice and safely in place. Now the next part is to put on the actual headset dust cap. But in some cases, believe it or not, you actually have to put on one of these tiny, thin little washers. This is 0.25 of a millimetre thick. That's right, so it's pretty thin. 
Now these tiny little washers, they are used for that purpose of putting over the fork steer, then on top of the compression ring to actually, in some instances, bring up the dust cap just slightly because sometimes, depending on the model of your frame and the design of the dust cap, they can sit too far down and they don't actually allow you to get the correct amount of pressure there because instead of sitting on top of the bearing, they end up sitting on top of the frame. Luckily though, this one on Mr. Opie's bike is actually custom designed for this bike, so it's gonna be absolutely fine, so I don't need to worry about that. But if ever you do have a troublesome or constantly coming loose headset or something you just can't seem to get right, check that you've got one or two of those in there. Believe me, half a millimeter can always make the difference. So then we would simply put that dust cap cover on before putting on our stem. And at this point, you want the steerer tube to be about two or three millimeters lower than the top of the actual stem. The reason being, these top caps they have a, well, they're kind of convex, if you like, in their appearance. So you've got this bulge which comes down and you want to make sure that the actual steerer tube and bung aren't being fouled by one of these. So it, you need to have certainly a bit of gap there so you can actually tension and preload the headset. So before we actually put that top cap and preload bolt on and adjust the headset, how on earth is that preload bolt gonna work? Well, inside of the actual steerer tube here, we've got one of these, and this is called a bung. So a steerer bung, an expansion bung, anything like that. It works kind of in a similarish way to that quill stem we looked at earlier on, in that as you tighten the bolt inside, it actually creates a kind of a wedge system inside of the steerer tube. So as I tighten this, that starts to expand and then wedges itself inside of the actual steerer tube, meaning when we put that bolt on, it can actually allow us to gently tighten all the bearings into place, giving us that perfect headset feeling. Of course, the bolt inside of that steerer bung is hollow, meaning that when you do put the preload bolt on, it does actually tension up that headset. Now, not all forks have a steerer bung like that. If you've got a fork with an alloy steerer or steel steerer, then you're gonna have something called a star nut, which works in a similar kind of principle, but it is interference fit again, so you kind of have to wedge those into place. You tap them down in pretty carefully because they can become slightly deformed. So the old uh, cheap bike to super bike over there, that had one of those inside of it. Don't use them though on a carbon steerer. The reason, they kind of score the inside of the steerer during installation and that could weaken a carbon one. So, right, let's actually tension up this one though because it's so simple, all we need is a little tool like this. So, as you can see right now, loads of play there, loads of movement. If I just gently tighten that up into place, if I can just finger tighten that until I need to use the tool. And in fact, you could do it whilst rocking the bike backwards and forwards. Once that play starts to disappear, just go a little bit easier and then still a little bit there. It's kind of micro adjusting it. And what you're doing here is because of the bung inside of the actual fork steerer, that bolt is applying pressure and it's bringing everything together, believe it or not. And then when you're happy with it, you can actually just Feel the bearings, they are super smooth, very silky. I like that. And there's no play whatsoever. Then it's just a case of talking up your stem bolts. Now, if you do have a loose headset, you always do need to remove the, uh, or loosen rather, these actual stem bolts first. If you go ahead and try and tighten up the preload bolt here on the top, it's not gonna make a blind bit of difference. Uh, years ago, when these top caps used to be plastic, many people out there, they didn't really know how this system worked because road cyclists were quite slow to adopt the A headset or threadless style. Mountain bikers, well, they went ahead and used them, but many of us, we didn't really know how they worked. And I remember a friend of mine ringing me up and telling me that he actually tore through a plastic top cap through just tightening and tightening and wondering why it didn't work until I had to tell him, loosen off these bolts first. So, yep, then once that's all nice and okay, you can just line up your bars and stem, Double check again, absolutely perfect. And then it's just a case of talking up 
those stem bolts. Right, there we are then. The two different headset styles, threaded and threadless. Let me know which is your favorite down there in the comments below. For me, it's gotta be this one for classic looks, but this one for functionality and well, ease of use, let's face it. Right, don't forget too to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com and also let me know what you'd like me to explain how it works next. For two more great videos, how about clicking just down here and just down here.